Hello, my name is Luke Sala and this is Mr. Media. We're talking with Mishke. Mishke is a French-Canadian woman who has written a number of books about hemp, cannabis, and what to do with it. First of all, I'm, you know, I feel like jumping in because no, I'm not French-Canadian. I'm French, French from and France, Canadian. and besides, I'm Canadian. I have dual citizenship, but I'm not French-Canadian, which is, you know, total different set of uh, cultural references. <laughs> the Quebecois. Right. Yes. Where do you live? I have lived in Paris for the last uh, 12 years, with the, basically. And um, now this year, this school year, because I have kids, so I tend to think in terms of school years, this school year I'm spending in British Columbia in a little cabin in the woods. It's a good contrast from Paris. Yes, <laughs> better air. Um, but you have been a teacher before. I was. Yeah, and from that, you got involved with this thing called cannabis, marijuana. How come? Not as a teacher. Uh, per se, but you were We would teacher. imagine, you know, a teacher discovering that the students are smoking. Now, this is not what you're referring to. I think you, I think you're referring to the fact that the way I uh, first encountered cannabis was when I was a teacher coming from France, arriving in British Columbia, um, early 70s, coming with, you know, straight ideas about things and except about teaching, which is something that was close to my heart, and uh, discovering that the teachers I really had something in common with were the teachers that were people that smoked dope um, in their leisure time, and which caused me to rethink the whole uh, pot, the, what I thought I knew about grass. Now this was in the 70s? Yeah. I mean, it looked like in the 70s people were taking LSD, and, but was, was cannabis, was marijuana, even in Canada in those days, very common? Well, in, in this part, which was north of British Columbia, it so happened, you know, I don't know, I haven't made any sociological studies. All I can tell is that I discovered that in the high school where I was teaching, <coughs> The teachers, I hope they don't mind my saying that. <laughs> but even in later. those days, they, they, they used to smoke pot. And they, they didn't look You know, like they were young teachers. And, yeah. and, and you, were you amazed that they were not like lying in a corner like, oh, but they were... No, it wasn't people. that crude, but, but certainly it caused me to, to realize that there, there was something really positive about grass, which is something I couldn't have envisioned before. But well, at least there was something very positive for certain people, for certain people. in but certain it, situations. It is quite a step from acknowledging that to what you have become as a writer and an activist and a spokesperson for the marijuana cannabis movement in France. And you have even taken, um, well, you, you, you have not been in jail, but you have been taken to court. Mm -hmm. Because you have accused a prominent spokesperson for the government, a doctor? No, not a spokesperson from, for the government. A sort of behind-the-scene advisor for the government and a person who is primarily a scientist. And you have accused him of being biased? I have accused him of uh, using science, which is not good science, putting it forth while he knows, he must know somewhere in the deep of his heart that it isn't good science. He said, this is libel, this is, this is slander, I take you to court, and you lost the case. Not, not, you didn't have to pay a lot of money, you had to pay one franc. So it's, it feels like the judge said, hey, you shouldn't do this, but it's not. So you lost it, but you, made, you became a, a public person with that, with that lawsuit. I became more of a public person. I was somewhat of, of a public person. I'm known in some circles. You, you said spokesperson. Well. You know, France is a country uh, with such laws that you have to really watch out what you say or what you write in, in, the, in the field of cannabis because um, uh, speaking of it in a favorable manner is, uh, I mean, if you, read, if you look at the law, it's, um, it they carries a, a jail penalty. I mean, it, it's hasn't yeah, yeah. happened and it won't happen, but it's there in writing, so... No, no, in Belgium it has actually happened mm. that a, a certain editor of a magazine mm -hmm. 
was, um, you know, arrested because and, and got into a jail situation. I don't think he was convicted actually, but because a politician said you stimulate minors to use forbidden drugs, and he got into trouble with that. Mm -hmm. So that's more of the French Belgium approach. What do you think about our Dutch approach? <laughs> oh, we're in Amsterdam, come on. <laughs> well, I think, thank God, the Dutch have been there for the last 20 years, showing those that care to look that there was another approach than repression. And it has its drawback, the, the Dutch situation, because it, I mean, the great part is tolerance. And the drawback is um, the law hasn't moved. It's not the drawback, but it's, you know, where we it's are. Where the law, the law is still, hasn't changed in all this time. And, um, of course, the main problem for Holland is maintaining a balance between moving forward, because there, there obviously are people in the political world that would like to actually change the law. And yet, at the same time, so going forward as much as possible, and and yet at the same time sending signals to Chirac and people the, the like French, him. The French people, the other European countries send, that... Sending uh, signal that, no, we're, we're, we're not doing anything that you could feel threatened by. Uh, we're it's very funny, Dutch politicians feel like we shouldn't be the drug nation of, of Europe. And all the time, the, the news and the French... Um, Newspapers come up with a story like the most, not only cannabis, but also um, ecstasy, MDMA is made in Holland and we are really the bad guy in Europe. Well, well, I go around the streets here and uh, it, it's a fairly clean nation, isn't it? Have, have you seen people... Well, I'm too old, you know, they don't come to me anymore, <laughs> so I couldn't tell. <laughs> no, but it, it feels like the reality of all everyday life and this political image that Holland has as a drugs nation is, is not correct. It's the, the, I don't feel Holland is a drugs nation, but if I read the French newspaper, it is like every second Dutch citizen is a criminal. Well, you have all sorts of newspaper, and so they're, different newspaper use the image of Holland in whichever way they can use it. So some use it to say, look, isn't it horrible? And others use it to say, or try to use it, you know, f few voices are coming to say, uh, using it to say, well, look, you know, it's, wor it's working. And as far as the public health is concerned, we all know that the Dutch uh, fare so much better than the French, for instance, mm. in, in drug the media related. are very manipulative, I, I find. Sometimes uh, there's French camera teams coming here, and they... Um, they are just out to shoot like five minutes or three minutes of people in, with drug problems or house parties where half naked people are really going out of their minds. And they take it in and they show it in France to prove, oh, the Dutch, they are crazy. Instead of coming here and taking the whole picture, you know, seeing where these people come from and what the reason was. And, and uh, they take a very one-sided look. And even if they try to give the opposing view, it's, it's black and white. It's, uh, well, you know, as you well know, we're in a society of no time, no time for anything. So you have to go, I mean, I imagine their point of view is go to what will create maximum impact in the shortest time. <laughs> so they want yeah. to go to those places. <laughs> yeah, head banging, really. It's, it's, it's giving you hypnotic messages about what is good and bad. And, and, and the more clear it is, the more easier it is for people to understand and therefore uh, yeah, we, we lose the grey area. Because this is where I stand in the whole cannabis dispute. For, for instance, this week uh, we have Cannabis Cup here, you're a celebrity judge, you've written books about cannabis, and I see a lot of, of hemp promotion. Now I don't mind the plant, I mean I think it's fine, it's as good as, as any other uh, plant, uh, great. You it's, know, if, it's better in many respects. <laughs> well fine, if, if it has if have technical mer marriage, you know, it's better twine, whatever, great. But uh, I see now all this, this fashion shows and whatever, and I have the feeling that people are using this technical aspect, that it's a good fiber and it can be used for paper and, you know, many good uses as a stepping stone to get marijuana free. Well, of course they are. And yeah, but isn't that a little no, bit like... No, but you have, to look, you have to look at things the way they are. And because marijuana has been demonized, it, it's not something that you, you can't un, undo something like that with reason. It, 
it's it's to do more with emotions demonizing so to they're opposing to one negative emotion a positive emotion this is a good plant it makes good clothes it makes good paper it makes and i think it's it's changing the image of the whole plant through uh, you know, you have the rope and the dope, and through the rope side. Yes, <laughs> rope and dope. Nice, nice. Uh, two sides. What yeah. we're talking about is, in fact, the two yeah. sides of the of the hemp I, I plant. I think it's it's a way of, you know, from a, 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 from the evil weed, it's becoming a uh, useful plant. Yeah. Uh, no, it's it's more than useful. It it's uh, weed, beneficent. It? It's a. Uh, yeah, but it is an evil weed. We, we spoke with a number of people who say it has great powers let's not let's not beat around the bush so it's not it's not evil it has a strong potential it's not evil it's not it's not good or bad it has a very strong potential this is what it comes down to it's very which, potent which yes which which in some societies would mean that the government has to take a, a point of view has to pay, take a stand because it is a potentially strong plant Either way, you know, even yeah, if Yeah, but not, not in the way the government thinks that it is potent, I think. I think it's very potent in that in some people, um, it's going, it does help some people, it has helped me, uh, in connecting with certain, what? Connecting with themselves, perhaps. Well, well let, let me play <coughs> the devil's advocate. Although I side with you on many points, I see that this happens, is that what the government fears is that it will become a recreational drug, what it fears that it will lower people's energy at work, that they become less interested in, in day-to-day -day life, that becomes that it's a sedative. Can, can you see that point? Yes, of course. <laughs> Yeah? Of course, I can see that point, but and, and I mean, I'm, okay. I'm probably the government would like, or some people who make money from drugs, like drug companies, would like people to take Prozac rather than than, uh, than cannabis. But I think both things should not be used to sedate, to 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 keep. <clears throat> so basically, it, you know, you go back to two different ideals for society. You have two types, and one is. Um, you know, the government and the people out there know better than we do what's good for us and they're going to tell us what we should do or shouldn't do. And the other is, um, you're going to connect with what's good for you or bad for you and you're going to take it into your own hands and do something about it. This is an old story. This so is, this I is, side up with the Yeah, yeah with but the this is the one. Qatars. This is the, <clears throat> the, the, the people who believe their own experience was it. You know, the... the the we talking organized religion, organized dogma, the church, the state, what we have now versus those rebels, those people who take things in their own hand, who believe gnosis, gnosis is in themselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fine. These are the two sides. What we only, what I see is, as an outsider, although I, you know I don't smoke, but I you know I, I'm not opposed to psychedelic, but basically as an outsider, not having financial or whatever interest in it, I look at it and I see that they're just stupid, that the government and the cannabis promotion... The government uh, and the smokers. <laughs> ...are both like very one-sided. To, to give an example, <clears throat> just recently in Amsterdam, um, Pados, which, which is a word, Padestule, which means magic mushroom, sprung up and became an over-the-counter item. The government asked for a report from this or that guy and the report says, oh, well, you know, magic mushroom psilocybin is not dangerous for public health. Now, I happen to know a little bit about it, and I think that's a wrong report. I think it is potentially a psychedelic, and, it, and, and selling it over the counter is at least a bit stupid. But because of this one report made by the, or on behalf of the Ministry of, of uh, I think, Public Health, now the police doesn't do anything against this rapid spread of Magic mushrooms, shops, uh, showrooms, places where you can use okay. it. So I think really what it, what it brings us to is legalization. The only way we can go about these things that have... You know, it's like there's been this uh, historical error, prohibition of drugs, of certain substances. Of certain drugs, always. Okay, so now, now that we have this prohibition, the question is how do we get out of it? And sometimes it's... it's 
It can be easy with, taken, with certain precautions not to develop a disease, but once you have the disease, it's really hard to cure, and this is exactly what's happened with drugs. I mean, if we hadn't taken that wrong turn and gone into prohibition, we might have dealt with them in such a way that they wouldn't have done the havoc that they have done. But we've gone into prohibition, we have prohibition, we have the disease. Now, how do we get out of it? This is really, this is what it boils but down can to. can you see the and, point of view? And, of the wait a minute. And the, the point I want to make is that it's only when you get to where you can have legalization means, uh, it's only if it's legal that you can also issue warnings that will be heard about the dangers. No, 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 I agree. No? <laughs> but I make, you, I make you Minister of Public Health in France and give you the responsibility to introduce marijuana in a 